Hello folks, uh, welcome to episode 1 of Paving the Way to DA, or Domain Admin, depending on what way you look at it. Uh, in this episode we're going to be covering off passwords in Sysvol, also known as GPP passwords. GPP standing for Group Policy Preferences. Uh, I'm going to be looking at introducing the vulnerability into the environment, and then we're going to step through into how to attack it, and then we're going to look at how to defend against it slash fix it. So with uh, this lab environment, what we've got set up is a server 2008 machine, uh, which is going to be our domain controller in this scenario, uh, which you can see here. And we've also got a uh, Windows 7 machine, uh, which is going to be our attacking client. So we'll just clear that for the moment. Um, going back to the domain controller, what we'll do is talk about a little bit about the issue to start with. So, uh, passwords in Sysfall is a well-documented flaw in the way in which group policy preferences works. Um, group policy preferences originally was used to deploy uh, local accounts and any updates to uh, machines. This is via groups.xml. Uh, now, this this issue in particular uh, is valid in machines where the uh, where basically from 2008 through to 2003 and below. Uh, it affects the way in which uh, passwords are stored. They're essentially stored with um, in a Base64 encoded and then encrypted uh, AES. Um, sorry, AES encrypted then Base64 encoded um, string. However, the key for the AES um, has been published by Microsoft, and this was published in 2012, I think, or 2008. 2012. It was published in 2012. So as a result, it's it's easy to. Uh, or actually it's trivial to reverse the uh, the password. So looking at introducing the uh, vulnerability to the environment, what we're going to do from the main controller is we're going to deploy a uh, policy via GPO um, and then we're going to update the workstations and then I'm going to look at kind of how to do that. So the first thing you want to do is you want to navigate to the group policy preferences uh, which is under start administrative tools and group policy editor, which is sorry, group policy management, which is here. Once you're in group policy management, you want to expand the domain in question. So for us here, it's going to be purplehaze.offense. Uh, we're going to right click on the top level and we're going to create a new GPO for this domain and link it here. Uh, for the purposes of this, we're going to call it stream GPO. Now you can call this anything you want, but from for our perspective, we're just going to use this. Uh, OK. Uh, now we see we've got a new uh, GPO that's been created here. So if we double click it to open it uh, and we go to settings, so right click on it, go to edit, and then go to computer configuration, preferences, preferences, control panel, and then you want to go to local users and groups, which you can see here. Inside here, uh, this is where we're going to create our policy. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click in this window here and we're going to go to new and then local user. This pops up this window here. This allows us to update current accounts or create new ones. We're going to update. So we're going to update the local administrator. From here, um, you can put anything you want in here. Uh, just for the purposes of the stream, we're going to put stream admin. And then we're going to add a new password in here. So we'll just make it something nice and simple. And then um, you can do whatever you want from here, but generally speaking, if it's a deployment account, you want to untick the users must change a password the next login. And you probably want to, like, well, from a vulnerability perspective, you want to tick uh, password never expires. Obviously, in a real environment, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't do this because it's um, extremely vulnerable. Hit apply, hit OK, and then you can see we've got a newly created policy in here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to navigate over to the Windows 7 virtual machine and we're going to pull down the new policy. So we're going to run gp update slash force. What this is going to do is it's going to pull down the new policy that we've just set on the domain controller. Uh, take a few few minutes uh, or a few, few seconds, we'll see, see how quick it is. So as we can see that's been, that's been successfully applied. So now upon next login there will be a new administrator password. Uh, for this uh, local account, sorry, for the lo local machine. Uh, what we're going to do now is, now that we've got the, the password in place and we're on the local domain, uh, we can start to enumerate. So uh, we can either reboot 
or uh, leave as is. Uh, given given that I've already rebooted and, and done this earlier on, it's going to be a lot easier. So first things first. Uh, now that we've in, uh, introduced the vulnerability in the environment, we're going to look at how to actually attack it. So there are multiple ways of doing this. Um, the kind of most common one that I've found is using GPP password, uh, which is a power exploit module. Uh, this is used within PowerShell, um, so it can you can run it one of two ways. You can either use it from the perspective of a machine that's connected to the domain, so this would be maybe an insider threat scenario or similar, or you can use it through run as, uh, and run as will allow you to run um, specific strings, uh, specific scripts in the context of the domain. So. Uh, I've got this machine which is connected to the domain. Uh, it's worth noting that out of the box, uh, get GPP password will trigger most antivirus, um, so just keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is we're going to load it in. Um, so the first things first is we're going to set the PowerShell execution policy to bypass. But do it, the way we do this is do PowerShell dash ep bypass. All that does is that cancels the execution policy, which means we can run scripts. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to load get gpp um, I'll link in the blog post where to get gpp password but it's on, on github under powerspoint and then we're going to go with get gpp password now this will error um, because of the fix later on but as we can see this newly created administrator account has the password of hacks confirmed and we've managed to successfully enumerate the local administrator account so that's how you do it in Windows. Um, to do it within Kali, uh, let's navigate or not. Essentially, to do it within Kali, there is the SMB Enum uh, GPP module where you feed it the domain, the username, and the password, and it will give you back the uh, same credentials we've got here. Uh, the benefit of doing it from within Kali is you don't actually need to be connected to the domain. All you need is a valid set of domain credentials to do so. Um, by doing so, it also allows you to potentially let, uh, kind of escalate privileges. So you're looking at going from a standard user on the domain to local administrator on a machine, which you might find in some environments is actually the local administrator for all the machines in the estate if they've been deployed with this method. So this allows you to kind of start to traverse the network more. So now that we've got the password, we can do a lot from here. We can log in as the administrator. We can do all sorts of bits and pieces, but. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to go through how to fix it and kind of some well some fixes and how to kind of monitor for it. So from the fix perspective, uh, if we go back over to our domain controller, um, what we're going to do is we're going to change the uh, permissions of the file, uh, so that means that people can no longer access it. Realistically, you want to either delete the file or change the permissions. For the purposes of this, we're going to change the permissions, so we're going to go to localhost slash this file um, and then we're going to go into our domain which in this case is purplehaze.offense and then we're going to click policies and then the newly created one uh, which is this one here we're going to open this up we're going to go to machine preferences groups groups.xml so we view this quickly um, I'll show you where the string is located and also what you can do with uh, any standard user has access to this uh, by default. So, um, if your sysfall, if your domain controller is running 2008 or below, um, you might be vulnerable to this. So, what we do is we can see here the C password field, which is actually just moved over. Uh, the C password field here is a base64 encoded string. Um, once we base64 decode it and then decrypt it with the key, you get the password as we saw with the uh, getGPP password. So. What we're going to do is we're going to, for the purposes of this, we're going to change the permissions. So the the kind of primary fix of this would be to delete the file, but if you want to keep it there for honeypot purposes, um, what you can do is you delete the file first, so that no one exists, and you can create a new one. So we're going to create a new uh, groups.xml. Uh, we'll need to edit this because file extensions are hidden for some reason. Let's go file save as. Change the style files, save. Yep. Delete that. Oops, that's an error. Let's 
save. There we go, we've got an XML file there now. So if I right click on this, I go to properties, and then I go to security. I can change the permissions for everyone. So if I go to authenticated users first, so we're just going to deny access to this file. Apply. Yep. And then we're going to add everyone in here. Check names. Yep. And then we're going to deny access. What this is going to do is this is going to mean that when we run this script again from our workstation, so the get GPP, get, get GPP password, so we're looking for hacks confirmed, it should not be there anymore, we should get an error. Uh, sure enough, the one that we had there before is now gone, as you can see. Hacks confirmed is there now, change the permissions, it's not there anymore. So as a result, this issue has been fixed. Uh, now you can monitor for this uh, under a domain environment um, if you look for access denied on the file under the event manager uh, sorry un under the event viewer uh, what you can also do is uh, if you're if using a seam you can set it up to alert on specifics uh, such as access denied and other things like that so yeah that's a quick and easy video on how to enumerate group policy preferences and fix at the same time Thanks for watching folks and I'll uh, catch you in the next episode. Cheers.